The summer of 2024 for Manchester United was due to be a difficult and crucial one to navigate through filled with transitional periods, touch decisions and early indications to see what the norm in this Ineos era may be. Safe to say, by the sound and looks of things, business has picked up and then some having materialised a working structure of footballing employees who can finally start to piece together a puzzle too complicated to touch in previous iterations of senior management. Could this be the upturn in fortunes needed to finally affect Manchester United's on-pitch successes in a positive manner? The United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Make sure yeah. you're hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, share it to your friends and friends. We share these twins to another dimension. Now, it comes as no surprise that as this summer has progressed, the main position of priority was to strengthen at centre back. Rafael Varane left on a free transfer this summer, and the same goes for Willy Camboala, who recently completed his transfer to Villarreal with a future buyback clause and favourable sell-on fee, depending on what happens in the near future. Wishing him the, the very best of luck in Spain sure. and España. I hope you smash it, first and foremost. But this one did come as a surprise to me, but in that same vein, a Manchester United at minimum are looking to bring in two new centre-halves, or at least this is what I still think. Uh, with Lenny Euro being the first through the door and potentially a Matthias De Ligt, even though that may take a little longer to iron out financially. Good news is that, on the player side at least, it sounds like he is favouring a move to Old Trafford. Eh? If those things do materialise, ultimately, competition for spots, chances to establish will be lower. And, and having that buyback clause in the Camboada deal, any deal with young talent is always a sense of security if he does ascend to greatness. Who knows? Who knows? Another potential name that probably now is the furthest from joining Manchester United is Jared Branthwaite. Had a decent season for Everton, but what has held back that deal was always the unreasonable pricing from his parent club. Uh, his parent club standpoint, let's just say that. And Manchester United, unlike in other instances, have their A, Bs and C. So he is not a crucial recruit. And with Everton's asking price being deemed as unreasonable to this point, it would be smart to walk away and, and see what else the market has to offer in accordance to what you need and who else you can get. Everton's ownership situation and, and how that affects things could come into play. I've heard conversations around that, but we'll have to see with a recent setback on their end after another collapsed attempt at concluding what must be turning into an anxious period for their supporters. American-based Fried, was it Friedkin Group yeah. failed to reach an agreement which would have seen them take majority ownership of the Merseyside club. So we'll have to see what happens there. Of course, Jared Bramford was the first name being mentioned out of Matthias De Ligt, then Euro, and, and now he seems like the one at the back of the line right now. So I guess we'll have to see what happens as, as this transfer window progresses. But so far, so good. Another talking point of the season was our lack of depth up front. Having to rely and inflict large amounts of workload upon Rasmus Hoyland, who in moments thrived and in others showcased his lack of experience and polish. Joshua Xerxes was the first signing of the summer and the way this deal was structured allows us to continue to be aggressive this window in presenting the manager, coaching staff and players with depth, competition for places and more as, as Sia mentioned also. Part of the reason I also say that is because talks of an additional striker on top of Xerxes seem to be in consideration with Ivor Tony being a name out there. Uh, a move from Brentford has been spoken about for a while now, slightly postponed due to that ban, but still a figure that intrigues Premier League clubs like ourselves. The midfield also remains an area where talks of Manuel Ugarte heated up. We heard from Fabrizio Romano on what turned into quite the Thursday last week. That personal terms had been agreed with the Uruguayan with the clubs needing to iron out fees and minor details regarding the deal. 
it will be interesting to see what goes down there we, we also should be expecting a decision from the club regarding Sofian Amrabat soon who ended the previous campaign relatively strong was on loan from Fiorentina with an option to buy a, a 21.4 million fee and is more than a serviceable option something also tells me that what will happen with Casemiro this summer could impact what we do here clubs in the Saudi Pro League remain interested there and, and may pursue He's taken part in, in both of our preseason games thus far and, and there would be an argument that his leadership and experience should be valued with young players transitioning into the first team or even more prominent roles. Mm. I'll, I'll throw it out to you guys in, in the comments. Would you consider selling Casemiro this summer or otherwise? We've seen Mason Greenwood depart the club for Marseille. Best for all parties. Omari forcing to Monza on a free deal. Donny van de Beek to Girona. I wish all works out with Donny. After the past few years here, going out on loan, injury problems and so on, just wasn't able to fully grab a hold of a spot in a Manchester United shirt for a multitude of reasons. It just didn't work out. And, and sometimes that happens. We've seen Johnny Evans sign a one-year extension. Well deserved for his ability to step into difficult scenarios, to say the least, the last season. And hopefully, with all due respect, his role and responsibilities should be lessened due to availability, which was far from a guarantee in 23-24. Long-term injuries to Lissandro Martinez, Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw, who can play in that position and more across the course, only provoke chopping and change it. At one point, there was a stat that showed we played with 14 different centre-back partnerships, which just doesn't bode well for continuity at all. Essentially, that word CM. Continuity is important. A catalyst for consistency. Something Manchester United have lacked for over a decade now from a success standpoint. If Eric Ten Hag is to have a chance to transform our fortunes anytime soon, the correct moves that suit everybody's vision must be executed and for once it has been good to see a more calculated and poised approach to a summer transfer window for the Red Devils. Indeed. On top of that, even though we both haven't been able to see a lot of United's first two preseason games from what I've heard and, and look, you take some of the good, some of the bad and progress as time moves closer to the curtain raiser. There was a noticeable improvement against Rangers. Now we can head over to the US tour where I'm sure things will ramp up ever so slightly. Preparation is key as always after all, but back to the video's talking point. In the comments, have your say on the summer window thus far and, and what you think will happen moving on from here. We both expressed an excitement based upon the evidence that has been dished out. Good eats indeed. I'm getting hungry by the way, CM. What are we gonna eat? Work it out. Go work I just it. hope we see more of the same. But now at least Manchester United fans rejoice and, and revel in what the club may become once more with a hint of competence. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies. When I'm last, it's always a blast. We'll see you lot soon. Bit.